Hey guys, we just released the JSON form widget and this widget is going to blow you away because it makes it a million times easier to build large forms without requiring you drag and drop 20 input widgets, especially when you're working on really large forms. Now, you would want to use this widget in cases where you would need to generate a form based on database schema or the response from an API call. And this widget is going to come in handy in cases where you need to have multiple forms on the same UI. For example, you may want to have a login form or a sign up form on the same UI. This feature makes all of that possible. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at three core areas when it comes to the JSON form widget. First, I'm going to show you how to generate a form based on a DB schema or an API call, the response from an API call. Next, I'll show you how to read data from the JSON form widget and how to use complex forms. And lastly, I'll show you how to generate forms with dynamic inputs. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. So right here, we have a simple application on the canvas and taking a look at this this is a table widget that has data coming from a get movies query so let's go take a look at what we have here in the get movies query this is a mongodb query that grabs a bunch of movies from the database and you see all of these records displayed on the table so let's say we need to create a form to edit all of the fields in the table um, how you would go about doing this is going to search for a form widget for example this is how you would have done it before. Drag and drop your form widget. Then you need inputs, of course. So you need to go search for an input widget, drop it here. And then you need to expand the input widget so that it's actually usable. Uh, now you also need to go in to give this a label. And oh, let's call this title, not label. So this is title. So let's say we want to edit the title field. And last thing here would be to prefill the default value of the inputs to be based on whatever record is selected. So you need to do something like table one dot selected row dot title, for example. And there you just have one field done. Now you need to keep doing this for all of the fields in the table. And that's just going to take a lot of time, especially if you have a really large table. Now we release the JSON form widget and this makes the process so much easier, like so much easier. You're not going to believe your eyes. So let me show you this. I'm just going to delete the old form. And now let's go search for a JSON form widget. So this is JSON. And here we have the JSON form widgets. And all we need to do here is provide some source data. So taking a look at the static source data here, you notice that this is a JavaScript object and uh, this contains some keys and values. And based on the keys and values provided here, the form is actually rendered. So you can see we have a name field, which is a text input. And this has a default value of John. That's exactly what you have right here. And for the date of birth field, um, the form, the JSON form widget is intelligent enough to recognize that this is a date field and correctly supplies a date picker. Same also goes for the number field. You can go increment this. So all we need to do here is reference the selected row on the table and the JSON form widget is just going to take care of the form building process for us. So let me show you this and get ready to be mind blown. So all I need to do here is type in table one dot selected row. And you can see the entire form has been generated. This, this is really awesome. The entire form is generated with all of the fields I need. And you can see that I actually did not have to configure all of the various inputs. Now, this is going to be a time saver when you need to edit lots of columns in a really long database. This is going to be really helpful. So taking a look at what we have here, I just want to quickly point out something. You can see that the second movie we have here shown on the table actually does not have an image record. So if I go click on this, the image input actually gets removed. And right now there's no way to update the image value. In some cases, this might be what you want, especially when it comes to um, having different forms in the same UI. This may exactly be what you want. But in this case, we actually want it to be possible to enter a value into a record that actually has no value previously. So what you would need to do in this case is go select an item that actually has all of the values you need. And now we can head back to the JSON form widget and turn off the auto generate form. So I'm just going to turn this off. And now when we go select a record that actually has no image, 
we still have the option to edit the image field. Now, this is going to be really useful. Um, the JSON form widget is very similar to the table widget. So you actually have all of these fields. For example, uh, let's say the vote average, I can go in to configure this. Let's say we want to update things like the field type. Probably we don't want this to be a number, we want it to be a text, for example. I can go update this and it becomes a text field. So you actually have the option to go in and configure the JSON form exactly the way you want it to be. And of course, we can hide entire fields by clicking on the eye icon and that field gets hidden from you. Now we're going to take a look at how to read data from the JSON form widget because um, the goal of the form widget is, be, is to be able to take in input from users and update that information, save that information somewhere, for example, a database or save it back to an API you have already configured. Now to show you how to do that, I'm just going to walk you through building an edit or update query for the movies table here so let's go ahead to do that here i have the movies database connected and i have the movie collection and i'm just going to use this shortcut that absence provides that makes it easy to start up with a query template so i can click on the add button and this is going to be an update template and here i can go into configure this so let's do let's call this update movie all right and for the query, I want to update by IMDB ID. And for the value, we can actually pull this from the item selected from the table. So we can do something like uh, table one dot selected row dot IMDB ID. And that looks good. The last thing we need to configure here is the actual update data. And this is where the magic of the JSON form widget also comes in. So previously, for every field you need updated, you actually had to go reference the field right here in the updates section. So say for example, you also want to update the vote average. You need you had to go reference the vote average here and also give it a value here, for example. You have to go do that for all of the fields in the, in the form widget. But the JSON form widget makes this so much easier because all I need to do is to access the form data from the JSON form widget and every other thing is taken care of. So all I need to do here is type in a code that says uh, JSON form one, which is the name of the JSON form widget on the canvas. And we can do a dot form data. And you can see all of that information is filled here with the right values supplied by the user from the UI. So let's go hook this up. I'm just going to head back to the canvas. And here for the submit button, what I need to do is uh, run the update query. So we can run the update query. And when that's done, we can run the get movies query. So for example, we can update the rating of uh, the second movie here to something like let's say 8.57 for example and I can click on the submit button and you can see that update has been made to the database I'm just going to you can see the update has been made to the database and we have that record being updated and shown right here so this is how easy it is to read data from the JSON form widget and use that data to update a record in your backend. Now I'm just going to show you how to create complex forms using the JSON form widget. And this is really interesting. So I have a JSON form right here or a JSON structure right here. And this structure describes a user. A user has a name, has an age and an email. And a user also has friends. And a friend is also a user. So you can expect the same structure, name, age, email and also friends and the nesting of relationships keeps going on and on and on and on. So we can copy all of this out and actually use this nested structure to build a complex form. So let's go in to use this. So I'm just going to paste it right here. Okay, let's scroll up. So in the source data, I'm just going to paste it right here. All right. And taking a look at the form, you can see that we actually have a complex form being displayed. So let me walk you through. Here we have the regular friend information. We have the name, age, and email. And based on the data supplied in the JSON form, uh, you can see the inputs have been prefilled. Now, if you go into the friend section, you can see that we have an array of friends. We have friend one with all of the data prefilled. We also have friends two with all of the data prefilled. And we can now go in to create a new friend, for example. So I can go in to create a new friend. And that friend can also have friends 
and the relationship keeps going on and on and on and you can keep going really deep with this so this is really exciting because it makes it possible to build complex widgets and i know you already have cool use cases for this the last thing we're going to take a look at is how to generate a form with dynamic inputs and to show you how to do this we actually need to write some javascript um let's go into bringing a couple of new widgets uh, we're going to be using the icon button widget and i'm going to bring another icon button widget I'm just going to place this in let's give this a minus icon and i'm just going to make this red so I want to build a form whereby whenever I click on the plus button, a new field is added into the JSON form widget. And whenever I go hit the minus button, we have one field removed. That's actually really easy to do because the JSON form widget is just that awesome. So let's go into wire this up. So for the plus button, what I want to do is save a number into the store. And based on that number, I can iterate through that number and generate dynamic inputs. Uh, you, given the number of numbers we have saved in store. I hope that makes sense, but you're just going to see the code as I write it out. So let's do a store value, and I want to give this a key of number, and then a value um, that will be incremented. So we can do a check here. So let's do a check. check. So we can do a check like appsmith.store.num. If this is valid, or if appsmith.store.num, is equal to zero what we can do here is increment the value so this is going to be appsmith.store.norm and we can do a plus one else we can initialize this to zero and the same also goes for the minus button for example i'm just going to bring this down a little bit here so for the minus button what i'm going to do is just do the opposite of what you saw right now so i'm just going to paste in the code right here and what this does is that it decrements the count so i can go click on this a couple of times for example and we have about three to four numbers saved in the store so the number count would be four now we can take that information and build a json form based on the number of items saved in the store so i'm just going to create a new javascript file for example and let me show you how this can be done so let's go into take all of that out for this function i'm going to call it the create form function and the first thing i'm going to do here is create an object literal so this is going to be const field equal to an empty object and then we can go in to generate the actual field so let's use the for loop and let's initialize this with the number saved in the absent store so this is going to be let i we call appsmith.store.norm so long i is greater than zero what we want to do is decrement i and given this loop what we can do is create dynamic fields so this is going to be fields and what we can do here is create a dynamic input so let's call this my input and we can add the index right here to make sure that we actually don't have um, the inputs being overridden so let's initialize this to an empty string. And what I can do here is return the fields um, object. So this is return. All right, this looks good. So I can go ahead to click on the run button and you can see right now we actually have two inputs saved in the store or we actually have a number value of two saved in the store. And as a result, this generates two form inputs. So let's go into use this in the JSON form. So what I'm going to do here in the source data is going to say, um, js object one and then access the create form function and right here you can see that we have a form with two inputs so now i can go click on the plus button and you can see that we have three inputs right now on the form i can keep clicking on this and this keeps generating dynamic inputs or i can go click on the minus button and this actually reduce the number of inputs in the form so this is how easy it is to create a form with dynamic inputs using the json form widget awesome i hope you found this video really helpful now you may be wondering what's next we made this video right here that talks about how to use the regular form widget because the regular form widget is going to be right here on appsmith because it also offers 
other features, especially when it comes to really customizing the experience of your form. So please go check out this video on using the regular form widget. Next, you can also go check out this video here on how to dynamically update a widget property using JavaScript. Just like we did while building the dynamic form input, go check out this video here so that you see how to do that. This has been a really awesome video and I'm really excited for the JSON form widget. If you have any questions or you have any comments regarding ways we can improve this widget, please let us know in the comment section and we'll definitely take a look at it. Thank you so much. I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.